Hi everyone. Um, so it's come to this, I'm afraid. Uh, <laughs> there's been quite a few people over the years that have told me to um, that I should start a YouTube channel. And I know obviously I used to do all the stuff for Marshall, uh, but I never really had much interest in doing my own one. But then uh, obviously things change, don't they? And uh, especially the year 2020. So um, while there's no gigs happening in the real world and the sort of things that keep me employed in general, I thought it would perhaps be a good time to do something to represent uh, the left-handed amongst us. Why not, you know? Um, of course, there'll be stuff in this that will appeal to many right-handed people, so everyone's welcome here. Um, but what we're going to be doing essentially is beginning by looking through some of my guitars that I own. They've all got a bit of a story behind them. Um, some of which are still readily available to buy as well. So it would be a good reference point, I think, for some of you. And um, yeah, we'll see where it goes. I, I was also thinking about hitting up some of my friends in the industry um, who could perhaps uh, let me borrow some of their new models to check out and, and demo on here and um, so we can see what's, uh, what's out there in the wide world for lefties and also perhaps a little place for us to have a rant and a moan <laughs> about what it's like to be left-handed and all those frustrations that come with it so uh so that's about it really so without further ado uh, i thought a good place to start would be my favorite les paul So this is my 2010 Gibson Les Paul traditional, which I've owned since new and is uh, has been my pretty much my go-to Les Paul ever since, which I'll get onto uh, in a little while how much use it's had. Um, but initially, just to look at the specs, it's pretty much what you'd expect from a Les Paul. Uh, so you've got mahogany neck, mahogany body, flame maple top, uh, very nice sunburst on this. One of the main points is the difference between traditionals and standards. Um, and from what I'm aware, the the standards seem to be lighter in weight. They have a bit of weight relief, whereas the traditionals don't. They're nice and heavy, as you want a Les Paul to be, really. Uh, I don't mind uh, paying that price. And um, the other things uh, between the two of them, I think, is the, the neck profiles and the pickups are slightly different, although I've changed the pickups on this, and we'll talk about that too in a bit. From what I've seen online, the traditionals were still, even the lefty models were still part of the the Les Paul lineup right up until 2020 when they sort of overhauled all of their guitars. So you could still pick these up in 2019 um, and in left-handed obviously like I say and there was two colour options you could get uh, Sunburst or Tobacco Burst. Now with the lineup changes that they've done I don't know what the what the current equivalent is to the traditional maybe someone out there uh, can tell me that um, but it's everything really you would expect from a Les Paul. Okay, let's talk about modifications. Um, the only thing I've changed on this guitar is the pickups, which I did uh, just after I got it. And as we do more of these videos, you'll see that's quite a common thing that I do uh, is change pickups in guitars because I think it really just uh, can change them so much um, for not a lot of cost, essentially. And with this, it was the same old thing. I spoke to my friend Tim at Bare Knuckle and he uh, you know, described what it was that I wanted in terms of tone and stuff like that that sort of warmth for punchy mids and quite bright and you know 
and he recommended the Abraxas set. So that's what's in this. And they sound amazing. It obviously, uh, especially on lower gain stuff that, and, and through those old uh, sort of vintage valve amps, it sounds amazing. In terms of usage, this guitar has had a hell of a lot of use in the last 10 years. Everything from all those Marshall online demos that you see, if I'm using a, 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 a Sunburst Les Paul, it's this guitar. And it always used to sound great through those, particularly through the old vintage amps. Um, and I also used to use it quite a lot when I was working with the R&D guys at Marshall um, as like a, a tonal reference always. This would come out and, you know, you've got to see how a, how a decent Les Paul sounds through a Marshall, haven't you? Um, and then uh, other than that, you know, I've used it on oh, gigs everywhere. Um, it records really well. It sounds great. I've used it for loads of recording. I've used it on loads of just general live gigs. Um, most recently, I used it in uh, 2019. I took it out on the road for the American Idiot UK tour, which was quite nice in a way because it was um, it was actually a, uh, a musical that I could use a Les Paul on, yeah, which doesn't come up very often. So I was uh, quite happy to take this out and use it for those six months in 2019. Um, let me tell you, I played a lot of power chords on this guitar in those six months, uh, but it was loads of fun. And in terms of how it's fared, pretty well. You know, I, reliability, I've never really had an issue with this guitar. Um, no scratchy pots, the, the toggle switch here, and that, you know, I give that quite a lot of abuse. Never had a problem with it, the input's great. Um, of course there's quite a few little chips and dings and scratches here and there but i don't care you know i love the look of old guitars the ones that sort of look like they could tell a bit of a story and uh yeah it's still as good now as it was when i first got it in those terms I think we're uh, we're nearing the end of this first video. I hope you've enjoyed it. Uh, I've had loads of fun. Yeah, why not? Let's do it again, you know. Um, a couple of things I need to mention, though. I thought it'd be quite good to have like a regular, uh, regular little rant slash vent about the trials and tribulations of being a left-handed guitarist. So please feel free to uh, submit any that we can share and uh, our grievances about being lefties. But the first thing I wanted to point out, and this is more probably more something for the, the right-handed guitarists out there, um, just so they can feel our pain, really. Um, so the first one I'm going to mention is quite simple. Being a left-handed guitarist, you walk into the biggest guitar shop in the world and you're stuck with just a few models. And it's, I mean, it's not as bad as it used to be back in the day where it was just the dusty ones in the corner, you know. But now you walk in, all those beautiful right-handed guitars, the Les Pauls, the Strats, the Tellys, the PRSs, you know, all they might as well be accordions <laughs> because we have no use for them. Uh, and all we're left with is the ones where you're just scanning to see which ones the headstock's pointing the other way or the body's pointing the other way. They're the ones we get to choose and we don't have as much choice. Although it's so much better now than it used to be. When I was a kid, when I first started playing my first guitars, you, know, you could only really get black and we're talking uh, late 80s here, you know. So before that, it was even worse, I know, for, for other friends I have who are older than me who are lefties. So yeah, that's my first little vent is that being a lefty, you don't get the choice. But the nice thing and the flip side, the positive side of this is that you do quite often feel that your guitars are a bit special because you know there's not as many of them you know what i mean even if it is something like a les paul traditional uh and finally i just wanted to mention um all these clips that you're hearing um i just got to mention what i'm using which is my not a marshall uh it's my uh line six helix uh which is a fantastic bit of kit which i've owned for a few years um and i bought it particularly because there's a lot of work i do now where you they don't really like you 
using live amps and they just want you di'd on everything so after looking through all of them i went with it with a helix floor unit and it was really the interface that got me quite interested in that because it's really simple to use and a lot more straightforward than some of the other rivals in that area but the one thing I really should mention that changed the face of it is the Michael Britt profiles that I bought for it after I'd had it about six months. And of course there was nothing wrong with the Helix and it sounded great, but just getting those Michael Britt profiles for whatever it is, uh, $30 I think, just changes it and brings the whole thing to life. So now you've got really great interface, really great tones, and the sounds that you hear, I've got about eight main sounds that I use um, and they are presets I've made myself that are variants, uh, all using the sort of the Michael Britt stuff. So I strongly recommend checking that stuff out. Um, and that, my friends, is about it. I hope you've enjoyed yourselves, and uh, I will see you on the next one. Wow, wow.